Welcome to the uh, Worldwide Center of Math. Uh, today we're looking at the basics of some matrices. Um, one thing that you're always going to see coming up with matrices is uh, does the matrix have an inverse? Um, can you invert it and uh, solve maybe a system of equations using that matrix inverse? So uh, you can only take the inverse of a square matrix and essentially what that looks like is A times A inverse is going to equal I which also equals A inverse times A. Um, I is the identity matrix up here. Uh, it's what I has, uh, depending on the size. If it's a two by two, it looks one, zero, zero, one. Three by three, it has ones on the main diagonal and then six zeros above and below. Uh, you can get the picture. It's all ones on the main diagonal and zeros everywhere else. Um, so that's what you're looking for when you're multiplying a matrix and its inverse. Uh, it makes sense to follow from that that uh, the inverse of A inverse is just A. Um, it's an interesting property to take a look at AB uh, inverse is actually going to be B inverse times A inverse. I'll leave that one for you to check out examples on your own. Um, now taking the inverse of a 2 by 2 square matrix and a 3 by 3 square matrix, uh, what you're probably going to be dealing with most often, uh, sometimes you'll have larger matrices um, but today we're just going to take a look at 2x2 two two and 3x3 three three examples. So the 2x2 two two, uh, matrix A, we have it as A, B, C, D. Um, the inverse of matrix A, don't forget that this is the uh, symbol for determinant. It's just going to be 1 over the determinant times D, negative B, negative C, A. So taking the inverse of a 2x2 two two is uh, super easy. Um, you can tell that it's only invertible if the determinant A is non-zero because if it is, this gives an unreal value, an, imp an impossible value. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and just look at a quick example here. Uh, let's first take the determinant of this matrix three, four, one, two. Determinant symbols on the outside, three times two minus four times one is two. So the inverse of that matrix is gonna be half So we need to switch D and A, so that's 2 and 3. And we also need to uh, multiply 4 and 1 by negative 1. Now you can either evaluate that by multiplying through by the scalar and you get 1, negative 2, negative 1 half, and 3 halves. Uh, we're just going to leave that scalar out so we don't have to deal with the fractions in the inverse matrix. So that's the inverse of a 2 by 2 matrix. It's uh, very easy to see and very to get, easy to get to. Uh, we're going to take a look at a 3 by 3 matrix now. It's a little bit more difficult to find the uh, inverse of. Uh, we're going to use what's called the Gauss-Jordan method, um, where you set up a matrix on the left and then a line in the middle, and then you have the identity matrix on the right. So on the right, it's just all zeros. And then you can use elementary row operations, uh, which we looked at earlier, to get to uh, the identity matrix on the left side and X on the right side. And your new matrix X on that right side is going to be the inverse of A. It's a very interesting method. We'll take a look at that in one second. Just uh, please note that if you are given a system of equations, you can always solve it by finding the inverse. And then if you multiply each side, so that we call this left cancellation, if you multiply each left side by uh, the inverse, what you're going to get is A inverse AX equals A inverse B. Uh, A inverse A, uh, as we know, is just I, which is just going to spit back X at us. So we have X equals A inverse B. Um, so that's another way to solve systems of equations using matrices, uh, this time using inverse. Now let's take a look at the Gauss-Jordan method for getting the inverse of our uh, three by three matrix A up above here. Okay, so we're going to take a look at this uh, three by three example. Um, what we need to do is write it out using the Gauss-Jordan method. So I'm going to go ahead and write that uh, augmented matrix. So we have the original matrix on the left, and now I'm going to write the identity three by three identity on the right uh, 
First thing I'm going to do here is interchange uh, the first and second row. That way we can get uh, one on the top. It's a little bit easier to use elementary row operations when we have a one up there. Now we just need to start using our uh, elementary row operations. We're going to have r2 minus 2r1, r3 minus 3r1 to get uh, zeros in these two positions. So we see that the first row is going to remain unchanged. Uh, the second row is 0, 1, negative 1. The uh, third row, 0, negative 2, 3. Um, and then we have changed on the right over here as well. So now what we need to do is add 2 of R2 to R3. And that's in order to get rid of this 0 here. And hopefully uh, make this 3 entry here a 1. So now we have uh, upper triangular matrix here on the left. Now we want to work towards getting rid of this 3, 2, and negative 1. First, we're going to add R3 to R2. Uh, that way we can get rid of that negative 1. And we can also, uh, in this same step, subtract three of, uh, excuse me, 2 of R3 from uh, R1. So as you can see, we're getting very close to making this the identity matrix. All we're going to have to do is uh, manipulate R1 and R2 a little bit, but um, let's go ahead and complete writing this matrix. So on the second row, we have added R3. So we have 1 plus 2, negative 2 plus negative 7, and 0 plus 1. And on the top, we're subtracting 2, so 0 minus 4, 1 plus 14, and 0 minus 2. Last, all we need to do is subtract 3 of R2 from R1 to get the uh, left side to be the identity matrix, and the right side is going to be our resultant inverse. So we have our resultant. 
on the right side there. That's our resultant matrix, and that is X, which is A inverse. And that is how you use the uh, Gauss-Jordan method to uh, invert a matrix.